Hi, I'm Rhea. And I'm Dwayne. And we are your hosts of the Travel Party of Five podcast, where we share how we travel as a family of five around the world. We will also share how we use points and miles to travel as affordably as possible and sometimes even completely free. So if you're wanting to travel more with your family, but you're not sure how, we'd love for you to listen in. So welcome to our podcast where we hope you learn a thing or two to get you closer to your next trip. Hello, and welcome back to episode three of the Travel Party of Five podcast. We are really glad you're here. Yep. Welcome back. And if you're new, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, So after listening to the first two episodes, I thought we would take a step back and just assume that you, the listener, are new to travel hacking. So today we'd like to go over those steps on how to start travel hacking. Yeah, like if you were going to take like, I don't know, four or five steps to get started, like actionable steps, like what would those be? So I thought we could go through those and get you maybe signed up for a card today. So step one, I think, would be, you know, figuring out your credit score. Um, Preferably if you had a 640 or above, that would be great. Um, If you were below 640... Uh, there are ways to repair that. And we can probably do a whole episode on credit repair because there's, let me preface this by saying we're not credit repair experts, but there are little tweaks and things that you can do that can help to boost your score. And you can do them on your own. You don't need like a credit reporting agency or anything like that uh, because a lot of times those are scams. Yeah. And to check your credit score, you can use, you know, sites like Experian Boost or Experience Boost, as I like to call it. <laughs> um, completely free. Uh, we we think it's better than Credit Karma. Uh, we've been using it for over a year. It is better than Credit Karma because it is actually pulling your actual credit reports from the three credit reporting agencies, which are, I think, Equifax, TransUnion, and I don't know, there's a third one. And so Experian Boost is actually pulling directly from those, whereas Credit Karma is kind of taking like an aggregate guess. Um, And so Credit Karma is like a good kind of guideline, but Experian Boost is going to be more accurate. And it's worth noting, like when you sign up, for some reason, when I sign in, it's always asking me to like upgrade my membership to a paid version. I have never done that. I will never do that. It is completely free. So you do not have to pay for it. All right. So what would the next step be? So I think step two is to figure out what your 524 status is. I think we briefly touched on the 524 rule in episode one about the companion pass. But essentially, the 524 rule is a rule that's not really in writing, but there's zillions of data points from Chase that say that this is accurate. So Chase basically allows you to open five personal cards within a 24-month window. And once you are above five, they will no longer approve you for a personal credit card. And it doesn't have to be just Chase cards. It is any card. So if you have opened like a Care Credit uh, credit card or JCPenney or any kind of store credit cards, those are all credit cards that count on your credit report and count within this 524 rule. So the five your 524 status is basically how many credit card how many personal credit cards you have opened in the last 24 months across the board doesn't matter if it's chase or amex or whatever if you're above that it is very unlikely that chase is going to approve you so i think if you figure out that number for you and you are above that the only thing that you can do is wait 
you cannot close the cards. I mean, you can close the cards, but it doesn't change the status because it it counts from the date that you opened the card. So whether or not the card is still open doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Sorry, I was just going to say uh, business cards do not count towards 524 for the most part. However, if it's a Chase business card that you're getting approved for, you have to be under 524. So if you are literally have five in 24 months, you're unlikely to get approved for even a Chase business card. But if you're at four, you're good. And I am actually at four right now. So I cannot open any personal credit cards for a little bit of time, probably about a year. But you are under, so we're good. Um, what do you think step three is? Step three is understanding and knowing the sign-up bonus to those cards um, because there is a minimum spend on most of those. Well, all of them, right? Yeah. So then from there, you would figure out, you know, your spending for each month. To help you get to that signing bonus, uh, you can throw things like groceries, child care, sports, whatever it is that you spend, you know, throw it on the credit card. That's what we did. Um, we basically use it as a debit card. For the most part, how any of these cards work is you're going to get approved for the card and there will be a minimum spend requirement. In order to receive those points, typically the time frame to hit the minimum spend is 90 days. So here's the gist of step three. You need to know how much money you're spending every month so that you know if a card has a minimum sign-up bonus or a minimum spend requirement of like $6,000. Mm. You need to know, do I like do I spend $6,000 in 90 days? Yes or no. And if you don't, then that's probably not a good card for you. Or you need to figure out a way to maybe pay for something for someone else and have them give you the cash or something like that you know what I mean but if you're spending well over six thousand dollars within a 90-day period again on things like groceries child care whatever then yeah sign up yeah bonus is easy to obtain because the key is to not spend more than more than you would without the credit card yeah. So, yeah, basically, that's step three. Step four. So, I think this is going to be kind of a long one, but you need to have a basic understanding that not all points are created equal. And there's quite a few different points, like ecosystems. And each ecosystem is kind of like its own currency. So... If we were going to compare, like, let's say Hyatt points to Marriott points, right? Those are two pretty well-known hotel chains. It's like comparing the U.S. dollar to the Mexican peso or the Canadian dollar or the euro. So it's not a one-to-one comparison. I can't hand you a U.S. dollar and get back one Canadian dollar, or one peso, right? That's not a fair trade. The same way I can't use one Hyatt point, the same way I would use a Marriott point. They just have a different value. Um, and I guess to elaborate on that, like you can get an average Marriott for around 50,000 Marriott points a night. Whereas like the nicest, highest tier Hyatt, like a Park Hyatt, which is like super luxury, like incredible, hotel that rich and famous people stay at is worth about 45k a night at the most usually so it's just vastly different points values so if we take one step back I think the easiest way to explain is to think of two main categories of points so there are flexible points and then there are airline or hotel specific points So let's start with the flexible points. Um, This is not going to be a full comprehensive list, but a few of the more popular uh, flexible point systems are going to be Chase Ultimate Rewards Points, uh, Capital One, 
and American Express membership rewards. And all of those are flexible points that you can transfer to different transfer partners. So for example, Chase Ultimate Rewards points can be transferred to places like Southwest Airlines to book Southwest flights, United to book United flights, British Airways, Hyatt to book Hyatt hotel nights. All in all, Chase currently has, I think, 14 transfer partners. I think three of them are hotels and the rest are airlines. But it's, I think it's also worth noting here that transferring directly to the travel partners is the best way to use these points. A lot of times these um, points ecosystems will have what they call a travel portal. So there's a Chase travel portal, there's a Capital One travel portal, and they are going to encourage you to book through their portal. And generally that's not recommended for two reasons. One, it's often not a great redemption. And two, it is the equivalent of booking through a third party, similar to booking on Expedia or Travelocity. And often the third party customers are the first ones to get bumped or canceled because they're the least profitable for the airline or hotel. So if a hotel is approaching like fully sold out and they need to start walking people to another hotel, those third party people are the first ones to go. Um, You also can just get a way better deal usually if you transfer directly to whatever partner you're wanting to book on, whether that's Southwest or whatever. Um, So that's category one, flexible points. So flexible points, again, are points that can be transferred to different travel partners. And so they're flexible because you can do a lot with them. The second category is going to be opening co-branded cards and earning points that are specific to that airline or that hotel chain. Uh, So for example, our first episode that we did was all about how to earn the Southwest Companion Pass and the cards that you would open to earn that are specific to Southwest. So that would be what I would call a co-branded card. It's a chase card, but it's, its points are Southwest and can only be used on Southwest. You cannot transfer them to anywhere else. And then there's also like co-branded American Airlines cards, Marriott cards, like all of like there's Alaska Airlines. There's all all the airlines have their own card for the most part. And same with the hotels. Um, But again, you can only use those points at that specific thing. So while still good, they're just less flexible. Yeah, we've used that strategy multiple times, correct? What strategy? Well, transferring points to oh that's exclusively how we book everything yep all right so um that was a great explanation um what do you think the first card should be for someone who's new to travel hacking so i think a lot of people generally think that their situation is unique And they need like unique guidance on which card to open first. And I think generally for the most part, that's really not true. Um, So sorry, but no one's really that special. Um, I think that your first card should, without a doubt, either be the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And so I'm going to give some details on each card. I apologize if this is a little bit tedious, but I think these are basically like two powerhouse travel hacking cards um, and and you really need one of them for quite a few reasons, which I'll touch on. Um, I guess I'll start by saying that you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred card Mm -hmm. and I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And there's a reason we don't have two of the same. Um, But I think let's get into it. So, and let me also add that in order to use your Chase Ultimate Rewards points, you have to have one of these two cards or a Chase Inc. Business Preferred card. Chase, as a side note, has, there's like, I think three or four different Chase Inc. Business cards. 
but the Chase Inc. Business Preferred is the only one that allows you to uh, use or transfer your ultimate rewards points. So basically, you need one of those three, one of these three cards to be able to transfer your points to any of the partners that we just talked about. So I think let's start with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So both of these cards have an annual fee, but their annual fee is very different. So the one that you have has a $95 annual fee. Which is cheap. Very. It is, it's, ch- it's cheap compared to the reserve. It's also cheap in general. Um, that annual fee includes a $50 credit. Now, <laughs> after I just told you not to book in the Chase portal, the only way to use that $50 credit is to book something in the Chase <laughs> portal. <laughs> which is kind of a pain, but I would recommend using that for like a one-off hotel where you just need to stay one night and it's, you know, maybe you have an early flight and you have to stay near an, like at an airport hotel or, or something like that. That's when I would recommend using that $50 credit. And so then that really brings the fee down to $45. And so, um, let me go over a few of the travel protections and benefits that this card offers. And again, this is the Chase Sapphire Preferred card with a $95 annual fee. So you get trip cancellation or interruption insurance. Um, if your trip is canceled or cut short, you can be reimbursed up to $10,000 per person. Um, they have primary rental car insurance coverage. So what that means is if you rent a car, you pay with this card, you get into a car accident, you don't even need to contact your insurance because Chase is going to be your primary insurance for this um, accident. There is baggage delay insurance. So if your bags are delayed over six hours, you can get reimbursed, I think it's up to $100 a day for up to five days. So if you need to buy clothes or toiletries or whatever it may be, um, that I mean, that's a phenomenal benefit. They also have trip delay reimbursement. So if your trip is delayed more than 12 hours or requires an overnight stay, you and your family are covered for meals, lodging, and I think that's up to $500 per ticket. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good amount. I think it's just like in order to take advantage of these travel protections, you have to use this card to make the the flight purchase or the hotel purchase. That's the, the kicker. So like having the card doesn't really matter. You have to use the card. Um, you also can get an Instacart Plus subscription. I think it's six months for free. Um. There's a Dash Pass, so if you are big on DoorDash, you can get, uh, I think it's a a one-year membership of Dash Pass, so that, like, usually saves you a little bit of money if you're um, ordering that quite a bit. And zero dollar delivery fee, which... Yeah, it takes away all the delivery fees, which is nice, and I think the service fees get cut in half. Nice. Um, So, I DoorDash on occasion, and so I, I use that. Um... So the next card. Yeah. So the next card is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Now you can think of this as like the luxury card of the Chase cards. So the annual fee for this is, are you ready for this? $550. (laughs) It's $550. And if you are thinking absolutely not, that's okay. Just get the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Uh, But let me tell you what you get for that $550 and why we are going to keep our card for at least this second year and then maybe reevaluate from there. Step one, first and foremost, you get a $300 travel credit, which automatically takes that annual fee down to $250. So, and you don't have to book through any kind of portal. As long as it is you... You pay with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card and it codes as travel. 
So that would be obviously airlines, hotels, rental cars. Those should all code as travel. And then there are, there are I'm sure, other things that would too, but those are obviously the main ones. Um, you pay with your card and then Chase will just automatically give you a $300 credit on your statement. So now we're already down to $250. Um, and then let me go over. So it's kind of similar things to the Chase Sapphire Preferred, but better. So you get lounge access. Um, so you get a Priority Pass membership through this card that gives you access to any Priority Pass lounge. And I believe it also allows you to bring in two guests with this specific Priority Pass membership. It's definitely at least one guest because we have used that Um that's the one we went to in Las Vegas. Yeah, and let me just throw this out there. If you haven't used a lounge at the airports, I it's a must. Free food, free drinks, place to hang out while you wait for your flight. You know, it's not packed, so you're comfortable. You can charge whatever it is, your laptop, iPhone, phone, whatever. Um, it's definitely a must when traveling, especially with kids. You know, you save money on. Yeah. I think, like, I think we need to do a whole lounge episode. I mean, we should for sure. Because, well, yeah, I think we should. Because, yeah. yeah. Um, but we don't want to give it all away now. <laughs> um, also, okay, so Priority Pass lounges. Also, Chase is opening um, Chase Sapphire lounges in the airports around the country. I think there's eight different ones that they are targeting and Phoenix, which is our home airport is one of the first ones. And it's supposed to be open by the end of this year. I'm sure that'll be delayed at, at some point and maybe we're talking early 2024, but I also don't know how guests work. Like, I don't know if we could bring our whole family and I haven't quite figured that part out yet, but I am excited for that. You also get with this card a statement every four years of up to $100 that can be used as reimbursement for global entry or TSA pre-check or um, things like that. So I have TSA pre-check and it is such a game changer with kids, but probably we can go into that on a different episode. But just imagine you walk through the security line and you don't have to take off your shoes and you don't have to take off any laptops out of your bags and you just roll right through. It's fantastic. Um, you also get a Lyft Pink membership for, I think, two years. And that has a $200 value. Um, so you get 10% off Lux rides with Lyft. Um, I don't know free priority pickup upgrades, and you earn 10x total points on any Lyft rides that you pay for on the card. Um, you get the Dash Pass subscription, same as the other one. You also get a monthly $5 DoorDash credit. So, I mean, that's 60 bucks right there if you use it once a month, which I for sure do. You get an Instacart membership. I think with this card, it's value. Uh, it is active for a year. So the other card is six months and I think this one is a year. Um, you also get an Instacart credit of $15 if you are, if you do sign up for the Instacart Plus membership. So $15 a month in Instacart credit. And let's see, we talked about the priority pass. Um, and then it also has similar travel protections to the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Um, I think the only difference is the primary rental car insurance is higher. Like I think the amount is higher for some reason, um, but it still has like the baggage delay, the lost luggage, the the trip delay. Um, it also has, I didn't actually know this until I was looking this up for this episode, but it has roadside assistance. So if you have a roadside emergency, you can call for a tow, a jump start, a tire change, a locksmith, or gas, and you're covered for up to $50 per incident four times a year. <laughs> like how many times are people running out of gas or whatever? I mean, four times a year, that's, um, I don't know how much those things would cost, but like, would do you think $50 would like cover like a tow? I, I really have no idea. It wouldn't cover the toe, but it would definitely 
help with that. I mean, it would. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 41 and I'm still on my parents AAA <laughs> membership. So I don't know. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> my mom just asked me the other day if, if I, sh- if she should can keep me on. And I said, yes, please. Of, of course. <laughs> Oh, anyways. Um, so those are those two cards. I think starting with one of those is your best bet. If you are on top of it, you can easily make that $550 annual fee back, um, especially in the first year if you're going to get uh, global entry or, or pre-check. Actually, I have global entry, which includes pre-check. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do not, but we won't get into that. <laughs> well, it's pending it's pending (laughs) it's been pending for like almost a year so we're just waiting (laughs) to hear back something and sometimes that happens like there are stories of people where it takes like 12 to 18 months before they hear back um i'm squeaky clean mine was approved in like two weeks i feel like from start to finish which is pretty fast really fast yeah um <clears throat> okay so yes easily you can get your money's worth out of the annual fee regardless of which card you choose and i think the only time that i would change this strategy is if there is a specific hotel or place that you want to visit and chase ultimate rewards points for whatever reason do not transfer to either the hotel chain that you really want to stay at or the airline that you really want to fly on um but I mean, I think for the most part, it's a good starting point. Yeah. Um, well, that was a great explanation of that. I think the listener and myself are learning, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as we go here. Um, you know what? I'm sorry. One thing I forgot to mention is both of these cards, you, you, first of all, you can, you cannot have both at the same time. So that's why you have one and I have the other. Um, and you can, you're eligible to get a new bonus every 48 months. So if you in the past had one of these two cards and it's been more than 48 months since you received the bonus, so not since you signed up for the card, but since you got the sign up bonus, uh, what you should do is down call Chase to downgrade your card to like some kind of no annual fee card, like a Chase Freedom maybe. And then wait about 30 days and then apply again. And then you can get the sign up bonus again. Hmm. Yeah. Smart. Smart move. Um, yeah. Like I said, great explanation of that. Um, if I were going to add a bonus step, I would just say start to think about whether or not you have a player two that you can involve in this hobby. Um, this is often a partner or spouse, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a parent, a brother, a sister. Anyone that would like to travel with you frequently. Um, If you have a larger family, it would benefit you more to have two adults playing this game. Um, Let me just throw out that kids can be a part of it, but they have to be 18 or over or older. Sorry. Um, Because not only are you both earning points, but you're also going to get points by referring each other for those specific cards. That being said, it's not a necessity. Uh, you could totally hack one or two trips a year for you or for your family with just one player. You could, yeah. So, you know, just recapping this episode, um, step one, figure out your credit score. Step two, uh, figure out and understand the 524 status. Step three, figure out your current monthly spending. Uh, that way you can... You know, get those signing bonuses. Well, you can know whether or not you're going to be able to meet yes. the sign up bonus. Yes. Yeah. Like that's the most important part because there's no point in wasting a, a five twenty four spot if you can't get the sign up bonus. Yep. 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 <clears throat> and yeah, I've I've explained that to people, and they're like, "Well, I don't spend that much." You know, my sister is that person. Yeah. She. She's I'm single. like, are you ready for another card? And she's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just. I mean, she's one person. She has a dog, but she doesn't spend two thousand dollars a month no. on. I mean, on anything. Feeding kids or yeah, she know. yeah we have hungry children to feed. Yeah. So, um, step four: um, 
have a basic understanding that not all points are created equal. Um, five, choose your first card and apply. Step six is seeing if you have a player two that can get involved and um, make sure you refer them to that card. That way you get the referral bonus. Yep, but yes. So yes, 100% yes. Um, it's just you can only refer to cards that you already have. Oh, yeah. So like for example, when I, I opened up the Chase Sapphire Reserve, I couldn't refer you to the Chase Sapphire Preferred because I don't have it. So even though the cards are similar, unfortunately, you can't refer back and forth. Um, and I don't think it makes sense for both of us to have that annual card or that card with an annual fee of $550 because that's just a lot of money. And it's it's just not like there's not enough like one person having the benefits is enough in my opinion, in a partnership like this. But I do think it makes sense for both people to get the Chase Sapphire preferred card just because the annual fee is so low and you could yeah. refer one to the other. So yeah. um, I think we can put some links in the show notes to the Experian Boost website that we recommended for checking your credit score and kind of understanding your credit um, 524 status. We can link the credit cards that we referenced in um, step four, I think it was. And then if you have any questions, you can find us on Instagram at travel party of five. It's actually travel underscore party of five, like the number five. And we can put a link to that in the show notes yeah, as you well. You can ask questions through that as well. Um. Yep. I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you so much for listening. And as always, if you enjoyed it, we would really appreciate it if you would leave a rating or a review because that just helps the show get found more often and we appreciate it so much. Yep. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time. Bye.